Hi, my name is Daryl Lyonland, and in this video, I'm going to present my research topic, the radiation shielding in space, the novel use of scattering phenomena, which is a project 17 of a chemical engineering research project that was offered in semester 2, 2019. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the contribution of both my research supervisor, Dr. Shane Escher, and my research partner, Mr. Josefa Said. Well, with the ambition of setting their feet on Mars by 2030, many developed countries have increased the number of space launches with the goal of gaining a better understanding of the nature of life in outer space. To protect the space crew from dangerous emissions and exposure radiations, the wall of the spacecraft are made up of very thick materials known as radiation shields, which aim to stop radiation in the form of X-rays and gamma rays with energies exceeding 0.2 kilo electron volt. However, even with such protection, it was found that astronauts or cosmonauts are still being exposed to radiation level ranging from 20 to 2000 millisievert for a typical six month journey to the International Station, which evidently put them at risk at getting cancers. What we know about those radiation shields is a function through the mechanism of absorption where the photons like, are completely absorbed by the materials. And those radiation shields are, are mostly made up of lead, concrete, and polyphylene. In terms of the research being done in this field, safer materials with better shielding properties are being developed. For example, replacing the lead with polyphylene in 2004 introduced by NASA. But little work has been done about the potential of using scattering phenomena as an alternative mechanism to absorption for radiation shielding materials. So the hypothesis of this project is, suppose you have a, a star, and then next to the star we have a spacecraft. Then we decide to place a target object. The target object here will act as some kind of shield. Will, it will both absorb and deflect the photons away from the spacecraft. But in this case, we want to emphasize the role of the target object in deflecting most of the incoming cosmic radiation in the form of X-ray and gamma away from the spacecraft, such that only a small amount, a small fraction of the high penetrating radiation reaches the part where the space crew are. In doing so, the materials needed to construct the water spacecraft can be reduced in terms of the thickness and therefore can make the spacecraft lighter. To test this hypothesis, we have three aims. The first aim is to identify the predominant scattering modes, that is, which type of photon interaction will give us our desired result. Second, we aim to define a scattering behavior that is a mathematical correlation that relates the energy of the scattered photons, the angle of the scattered photons, and the relative proportion of the scattered photons. And lastly, we want to find an optimum angle for which we will obtain the most energetic like scattering photons with the highest proportion of scattered photons at the same time. Well, let's start by analyzing the different photon e interactions that exist. First, we have the photoelectric effect, where incident photons are, are absorbed by the atom and causes the release of electrons. So the typical energy of those photons will be around like 400, 300, that is less than 500 kiloelectron volt. A second, we have the pair production, 
when an incident photon strikes a surface and then causes the creation of two particles. First, an electron, a second, a positive particle known as a positron, which is very unstable and thus readily decomposes to two photons of lower energy. The energy of those photons is typically above 5 mega electron volt for pair production to occur. Third, we have the quantum scattering, where an, a photon with energy EI strikes a stationary electron and then moves at an angle theta to the horizontal, known as a scattering angle, with an energy EF, where EF is less than EI. The scattering angle moves at another angle, sorry, the scattered electron moves at another angle, such that the vector sum of the change in momentum of the entire system is zero. Compton scattering occurs mostly for incident photon energy EI ranging between 1 to 2 mega electron volt. <coughs> Lastly, we have the Thomson scattering. The Thomson scattering occurs at almost all energies, like at all energy range, but it's very insignificant compared to Compton scattering, pair production, and photoelectric effect. In the case of the Thomson scattering, an incident photon energy EI strikes a stationary electron and then bounces back with the same energy EI such that the electron stays at rest here and the vector sum of the change in momentum for the system is zero. So since photoelectric effect and pair production results in the disintegration of the photons and Thomson scattering is very negligible compared to other scattering phenomena. We've concluded that Compton scattering is actually our desired photon interaction that we will use to study the possibility of putting a, a radiation shield material in between the, the sun and the space crew. Sorry, the spacecraft. So now that we are now that we have identified the Compton scattering as the scattering phenomenon that we want to use in this research, we will have to base our calculation on the Compton experiment. So in this setup, monochromatic X-rays are being fired from an X-ray tube with an incident energy of 200 electron volt, 200 kilo electron volt, and passes when it's, it's lit, and the scattered photons have their energy measured and angle measured using the X-ray detector mounted on a protector. And by using the relationship between the scattered energy of the photons EF and the scattering angle theta that was discovered by Archer Compton in 1923, a graph of scattered photons against the angle of scattered photon theta is plotted for an incident photon energy of 200 electron volt. Then by using the definition of the differential cross section d theta of of photons that was discovered by Klein Nishina in 1923 and then up and, and then applying the chain rule the as follows in in here the Klein and Nishina Compton scattering probability distribution d sigma by def is derived as shown here in equation 4 so what is the significance of d sigma by def is if d sigma is the area that captures the amount of flux going through the solid angle d, d, d phi, then d sigma by def describes the probability distribution 
of having the highest like highest proportion of scattered photons in a particular segment and then by using equation 4 by using equation 4 d sigma by def which is a Compton scattering cross section is plotted first against this energy of the scattered photons ef for an incident photon energy of 200 kilo electron volt and then is plotted again against the angle of scattered photons theta for the same incident photon energy to determine an optimum angle that gives us a maximum scattering a graphical method is used so we start by picking an angle so say 10 degrees for scattering angle 10 degrees to the horizontal and and we use this graph the first graph and we determine the energy of the scattered photons here that will be around 198 kilo electron volt and based on this scattered energy we determine the relative proportion of the scattered photons with that particular energy this means it would be like 20 around 25 percent of all the scattered photons will have energy like around we have an energy of 190 kilo electron volt and corresponding to the same energy we have the scattering angles 10 and then the 10 degrees here for the scattering like angle we we find we determine the relative proportion of of scattered photons which flow through that angle 10 degrees like of the scattering angle by doing so we can determine an optimum angle for which we can get maximum scattering so as conclusions Compton scattering phenomena is a chosen photon interaction that gave us the understanding of how we could place the shield in between the the sun and the spacecraft so again we have the Klein and Nishina differential cross section d sigma and the scattered energy of scattered photons ef that are important variables to determine the relative proportion of photons with a specific angle and with specific energies. And third, a graphical method has been used to determine the scattering angles to, so that maximum scattering is obtained. And last and fourth, we have we also found that that experiment is replicable for other photon energies. For example, we carried the experiment at a photon, photon energy of 200 kilo electron volt and is also capable of like getting the same result for energies up to 1.5 mega electron volt. Based on what we found, we then concluded that the hypothesis is correct. In terms of future work, only neutral particles such as gamma rays and x-rays have been considered in this experiment no work has actually been done for alpha particles which is charged particles which also can give like a secondary like reaction or like occurrence to the shield a second work to be done in the future is we should determine we should develop a slate that will actually help develop a, a monochromatic like x-ray that will make the incident flow of gamma like radiation in in your direction in space and lastly the determination of the thickness and the length of the scattering object needs to be done in terms of its linear inter attenuation factor and the intensity of photons absorbed that was all for my presentation. This is my list of references. Thank you for your attention. See you later.